Welcome to the next lecture in this module, which is on biomolecules and their relationship to cell structure and function. We are progressing in terms of stories here in this module. We are into our third story and some side stories and as a result of these stories, we are picking up some basic information. Our first story was about infection and so on. The second story was about um, shear in bioreactors which led us to lipids and what lipids are and things like that, one major class of biomolecules. The third story is why curd gets formed, which led us to uh, carbohydrates uh, because curd gets formed by acid formation that leads to protein aggregation, uh, what carbohydrates were, the second major class of biomolecules. And uh, we stopped at um, the point where we reached the third major class of my molecules which happens to be proteins, proteins or amino acids as you call it. Um, you will know the difference very soon. This is going to be a third major class of biomolecules, totally there are four. So, in the last class, last lecture, we left at a point from a molecular viewpoint, what is a protein? Proteins are polymers of something called amino acids. Okay. That is what proteins are. They are polymers of amino acids. And what is an amino acid? Okay. It is very simple. This amino acid is very simple. You have the central carbon atom here, an alpha carbon atom. This is called an amino acid. right? So, you have an amino group here and a carboxylic acid group here. So, an amino acid, the amino group is an NH2 shown in blue here, the carboxyl group is a COOH which is shown in red here. Okay. So, these two are attached to the opposite ends of the carbon molecule, the alpha carbon molecule here. In addition, you have a hydrogen uh, atom here at the third and something called an R group as the fourth bond of the carbon. You know that carbon valency is 4. So, you have amino group, carboxy group, carboxylic acid group. So, amino acid comes from that and you have H and various R groups. So, differences in the R groups are what uh, is what gives rise to the differences in the various types of amino acid. right? And you have a, a polymer of these amino acids then you get a protein. That is what is described here. A polypeptide is a small par, a small protein you can say. Okay, let us say that for approximately now. A polypeptide is nothing but um, a shorter form of a protein. A polypeptide formation is given here to illustrate how a protein gets made. As you can recognize here, this is one amino acid, this is C, NH2, COOH, H and the R group happens to be CH2SH. Right? When this meets, let us say, let us just focus on this amino acid here, which is already combined to another amino acid through what is called a peptide bond. Let us look at the interaction between this amino acid and this amino acid. This has a COOH group here, this carbon atom the NH2 group here which is actually bonded on through the peptide bond to the other amino acid, the H group here and the R group in this case happens to be the CH2OH across a benzene across a aromatic ring here. So, when these two interact this OH of the COOH here and this H of the NH2 here condense out the water comes out and it results in the formation of the CN bond here, the bond between this and this, this is called the peptide bond. Okay. This uh, carbon carboxylic acid NH2, this forms the backbone and these various R groups form what are called the side chains of this protein molecule here as a part of these various amino acids. And also it is quite easy to see that there has to be one free end here of amino group. Okay. Uh, the, if you assume that the growth happens this way of uh, various amino acids attaching to form larger and larger polypeptide chains and 
uh, proteins and so on. So, you have uh, any protein will have one free amino end okay, which is called the end terminus and one free carboxy end carboxylic acid end which is called the C terminus. So, a protein has a C terminus and an N terminus, it has a backbone consisting of the various peptide bonds and carbon atoms, hydrox, uh, carboxylic acid molecules and so on and the side chains that uh, are a part of each amino acid R group uh, that constitute the protein. This is how a protein gets made from the various amino acids. It so happens that there are 20 R groups that exist in nature and therefore, there are 20 different types of amino acids that exist in nature. Right? There could be other types of amino acids, but they are not naturally occurring amino acids and uh, therefore, there are 20 different types of amino acids in the proteins which are essentially polymers of amino acids. This has been grouped under uh, these various heads depending on the nature of this R group here. Okay. If the R group happens to be a non-polar group, then the uh, it is uh, grouped under this head. For example, uh, this H group, CH 3 group, CH 3 and so on, do not worry about the names now, um, uh, yeah, glycine is missing here, uh, alanine, valine. Uh, so, you have a H group, you have a CH 3 group uh, that becomes alanine, you have a CH, um, this has to be a CH 2 here, CH 2, CH 3, CH 3 becomes a valine and so on and so forth. In other words, all these are non-polar groups. Uh, the R groups and therefore, they are grouped under this. Let us count the number of amino acids 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of the 20 are uh, amino acids with non-polar R groups. There could be polar R groups such as CH 2 OH, CH CH 3 OH which is threonine, the earlier one was serine, cysteine, cysteine this is tyrosine, asparagine and glutamine. These are all amino acids with the polar uh, side group and it is also been categorized as uh, the side groups that are acidic and basic. If they are acidic and basic, they need to be electrically rather in, in the, uh, the electrically charged groups are uh, the ones that are on aspartic acid and glutamic acid and the basically uh, basic groups are the ones that are on lysine, arginine and histidine. You do not have to worry about the details here, I just mentioned the various things. As and when necessary, we can look at individual amino acids depending on our need and look at their properties. But these are the properties of the side groups that determine the properties of the proteins themselves. So, we saw amino acids with non-polar groups, we saw amino acids with polar groups and electrically charged groups which could either be acidic or basic, that is good enough do not worry about anything else for now, you do not have to remember any names, do not worry about it. So, this is the example, an example of a polymer of amino acids in a water environment, a space filling model of lysozyme water environment, this is surrounded with water, it has to be uh, in water. This lysozyme is actually a protein that is found in saliva, tears and so on and it also breaks down the cell wall of bacteria. The nature of the amino acids actually determines the nature of the proteins. Let us take an example here, the case of hemoglobin. The hemoglobin consists of various different amino acids here, a long chain of amino acids all connected together by peptide bonds. Okay. Some of these are given here, valine, histidine, leucine, threonine, proline, glutamine, sorry, uh, glutamic acid, glutamic acid okay. and because of this it forms various units and four units need to come together to form uh, a hemoglobin molecule and if it folds correctly, we will come to all these things later, the folding and so on. If it folds correctly, then it will do its job properly. right? its folding correctly is what is going to uh, result 
in a functional red blood cell which can carry hemoglobin. Okay. If there is a slight change in the amino acid uh, sequence here, for example, this uh, glutamic acid GLU in the 6th position has been replaced with something else, then we get a disease, we get what is called sickle cell anemia. Right. That is the only reason why we get sickle cell anemia. This glutamic acid in the 6th position has been replaced by another amino acid. What happens to that? Uh, what happens as a result of that? The we get a disease that, that is the result. Why does that happen? That is because the there is a lot of interaction that happens between the various parts of the protein, the various amino acids in the protein. Okay. We all saw that um, the amino acid, the side groups of the amino acids could be so different, they could interact with each other depending on their chemical nature and you have a long chain of amino acids. So, one amino acid here, one side chain could find another side chain attractive here and therefore, it will start interacting here as a result, it will bend the entire protein here, right. The entire, th this, this part of the protein uh, would be bent because this side group wants to interact with this side group. Okay. And that is what results in protein folding by itself. Okay. It's, it's, um, it, it happens um, spontaneously because of the need for the chemical interaction between the side groups. And this folding, the way it folds because of uh, the various side chains and so on and so forth is what gives protein its functionality. If that does not fold properly, then the protein will not be functional. And that is what happens here. In the case of normal hemoglobin, it folds properly to carry hemoglobin and you have a functional red blood cell. Just one change here, glutamic acid going to some other amino acid changes the structure, the folding of the uh, hemoglobin protein and thereby changes the structure of the hemoglobin protein. As a result, it, uh, I mean uh, a sickle cell structure of the red blood cell results which is unable to carry oxygen through hemoglobin and that results in sickle cell anemia. So, the structure function relationship is so uh, pronounced in the case of proteins, a proper structure is what results in proper function and this is a very nice example of that. I think we will stop here for uh, this particular lecture. We saw, uh, we started out by asking what uh, uh, proteins were, then we said that proteins are uh, polymers of amino acids, then we saw what amino acids were, it has a central carbon atom, an amino group on one side, a carboxylic acid group on the other side, so amino acid and then you have a H group here and various different types of R groups, one for each amino acid on the other side. Then when you put all these together, you have the protein and when you put all these together, there is a need for interaction of one R group with the other and probably other kinds of interactions with the water around it and so on and so forth. Therefore, the protein molecule folds and the folding of the protein molecule is what results in its function. And, and a very striking example is the case of uh, hemoglobin. Uh, in the normal case, it results in, uh, in the normal ability to carry oxygen to various parts of the body and normal red blood cell. In the case of one change at the 6th position, the amino acid being different, we get sickle cell anemia that is because of sickle cell hemoglobin being formed which has different folding and therefore different, uh, it does not have the functionality that is associated with the normal hemoglobin and it also results in a sickle cell shape of the red blood cell and the disease. We will stop here, we will continue our stories further when we meet next. See you then.